Good morning. Welcome to Mass. Today we have the readings of the third Sunday in Lent. To preface everything, a prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw, them near, would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. from evil. Amen. Unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We beseech thee, almighty God, Look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defence against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. The epistle is taken from the, the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Saviour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named amongst you, as becomes cometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks, for this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of thee those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore ye saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, he casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges." But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armour wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lift up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made 
and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember a gentleman telling me that his greatest fear is that someday he will be found out. What do you mean, I said? That they will know I'm not who I say I am. That I'm not who I want them to think I am that I'm not who I want to be, he answered. Beneath his fear, he knows there are cracks in his house. He knows that a divided house cannot stand and a divided kingdom will crumble. From the beginning of his ministry, as told by St. Luke, Jesus has been dealing with divided houses and kingdoms. He has cast out demons, healed Peter's mother-in-law, cleansed a leper, and caused a paralytic to walk. The houses and kingdoms of these people are divided the strong man has invaded their homes. Their lives are not their own. They live with inner conflict and turmoil. They've been separated from their community and all that gave them security and identity. Their outer conditions of illness, paralysis and possession point to the inner conflict. The battle between health and disease, not just physically, but more importantly, spiritually. The battle and interior conflict has been around since Adam and Eve separated themselves from God and hid amongst the trees of the garden. It's seen in Israel wanting a king so that it can be like all the other nations, forgetting that it has a unique calling, that it is to be different from other nations, that it is through Israel, the people of God, that God will act for the benefit of all people everywhere in every age. This division and inner conflict is a reality of today's world and our lives. A marriage divided is a divorce. A nation divided results in vitriolic politics and in the extreme civil war. An economy divided yields poverty and injustice. A community divided becomes individualism and tribalism, prejudice and violence. Humanity divided is all these things on a global level. Faith divided is sin. We all know what it is like to live divided lives. You know those times when your outsides and your insides don't match up. That's what it means to be a house divided. You're one person at work, another at home. You act one way with certain people and a different way with other people. Life gets divided into pieces. Behavior, beliefs, and ethics become situational. There's the work life, the family life, the prayer life, 
the personal life, the social life. Pretty soon, we're left with a bunch of pieces. It seems that we are forever trying to put the pieces of our lives together. That's why the crowd has gathered around Jesus. That's why the religious authorities oppose him. They like division. That's why his family tries to restrain him. In their own way, each is trying to put the pieces of their life together, but it's not working. They won't fit. They've been found out. Their life and their world are neither what they thought they were, nor what Jesus knows they could be. One reality has fallen, and a new one is ready to rise. But, but, but Jesus... Jesus stands before us as the image of unity, wholeness, integration, authenticity. He's the real deal. He's the stronger one. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He puts our lives and our houses back in order. Jesus offers a different image of what life might look like. He does so by revealing the division in our lives, the houses that cannot stand and the crumbling of our kingdoms. Even when it is for our own good, with the offer of new life and intended for wholeness, that's a hard place to be. And I guess it's why those who devise the lectionary in the Book of Common Prayer put this gospel on this day in Lent. It means that one way or another, change of some sort is coming. Most of us don't like that. It can be frightening. He's gone out of his mind, the people say. The religious authorities accuse him of allegiance to Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. They project onto Jesus their own interior conflict and division. They have declared that which is holy, sacred and beautiful to be unclean, dirty and bereft of God. But their accusations say more about themselves than Jesus, because he's the real deal. Their accusations reveal the depth of the conflict and division within them. Their accusations are a way of avoiding themselves. Brothers and sisters, it's hard to look at the division and inner conflict within our lives. But the beginning of wholeness is found in acknowledging our brokenness. Where is our own house divided? How? And to what extent have we created conflict and division within relationships? In what ways do we live fragmented lives, parceling out pieces here and there? What is it that shatters your life? Anger? Resentment? Greed? Insecurity? Perfectionism, sorrow, loss, fear, envy, guilty, loneliness. 
There are all sorts of forces, things, events, sometimes even people, by which our lives are broken and through which we are separated from God, others, and ourself. But Christ is the real deal. He is stronger than anything that fragments our lives. He will bind together the forces that divide. He will heal the wounds that separate. He will refashion pieces into a new whole. There is nothing about your life or my life that cannot be put back together by the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We offer Mass today for the peace of the world, for our church, our nation, and our parish, for those we know to be in need who've asked us to pray for them, especially those of our congregation suffering with COVID at this time. And we pray in years mind for the repose of the soul of Anne Angelique Rudman. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, 
beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins, which we all time to time as we pursue heaven. By all the word of the Lord, 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 the The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, merciful Lord. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. And now, we give thee thanks because thou dost give us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, unless trusting in thy righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, most humbly beseech thee. Grant that we receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Corpus Christi, Episcopal in Vita Vitae. And ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>